Leading up to the police is an absurd following right now. Lydia Thorpe removed from Sydney's Mardi Gras parade after lying in front of a police float in a protest against cops at Pride as Prime Minister Anthony Albanese makes history by marching. Protests in support of Ukraine while others demonstrate against giving weapons as the war rages on one year after Russia announced an invasion. A new survey reveals almost half of all Aussie teachers are looking to quit because of unmanageable workloads and being forced to take on classes outside their expertise. And former PM Scott Morrison reveals he's not rocking himself to sleep at night in the fetal position nine months after his government was defeated at the federal election. Good evening. It's been revealed Lydia Thorpe was removed from the Mardi Gras parade in Sydney last night after blocking what is believed to have been a police float. The Independent Senate has called for no cops at Pride. Authorities now confirming that as she was not arrested, she will not be charged for her actions. Board Lincoln Holmes is more. In front of thousands of people, Lydia Thorpe lies on Oxford Street during the Mardi Gras parade in Sydney. It's believed the former Greens turned independent senator was in front of a police float. She's approached by officers before the march started up again. The senator was part of a float already going on before the incident happened. New South Wales police say that Thorpe was eventually removed from the parade at request of the organisers because she breached the terms of participation. A parade spokesperson says that while they respect their right to protest, interrupting the parade in this way has significant implications for the safety of our participants and the audience. On Twitter, the Victorian senator saying today, black and brown trans women still face violence from police calling for no cops at Pride. Anthony Albanese also made history late last night as the first Prime Minister to march in the parade, saying that people want to see their government is inclusive and we need to be a country that respects everyone for who they are. Lincoln Holmes, 6 News. Olivia Newton-John is today being remembered by friends, family and fans in a state memorial service. Memorabilia from her life and career has been on display today. The service at Hamer Hall in Melbourne is being held following her death last August after a long battle with breast cancer. She was 73. More than 10,000 people have protested in Berlin against Germany giving weapons to Ukraine. It follows rallies across Europe in support of Kyiv. And as the one year anniversary of the war with Russia was marked, national reporter Austin Pollock is the very latest. The war in Ukraine is continuing with Vladimir Zelensky saying the only acceptable peace plan must lead to Russia pulling out all its troops from occupied territory. It follows a peace plan being proposed by China. US President Joe Biden, who was in Kiev just days ago, told ABC America that he's, quote, seen nothing that would indicate there would be something beneficial to anyone other than China if the plan was indeed followed. Biden also said the US will continue to provide military aid, saying Ukraine needs tanks, artillery and air defense, but has ruled out sending F-16 fighter jets at this point. Former American vice president and potential 2024 presidential candidate Mike Pence saying the US should step up support. The Japanese government also saying they will make our greatest possible efforts to demonstrate Japan's diplomatic capacity that is trusted by the world in order to reinstate the peace and stability of the international community following the one year anniversary of the invasion beginning. Zelensky is also continuing praise for Australia while calling for our embassy in Ukraine's capital to be reopened. I, I, I had big, huge deficit with armed vehicles, and it's very important, yes, moment. And I don't want now to, sh to share all information, how many uh, we've got from Australia, but anyway, we've got it, and that is great. That's why to shake hand the ambassador of, of Australia, I, I, I'll, I'll do it with pleasure. Please come. There have also been rallies of support in Europe, thousands turning out in Poland, Germany and Sweden, among other places. A new survey has revealed almost half of all Australian teachers are looking to quit 
According to research from Black Dogs Institute, some 47% of teachers are seeking to leave their job within the next year because of unmanageable workloads and being forced to take on classes outside their expertise. It's a stark contrast to the survey results only two years ago when just 14% were thinking of leaving in the next year. Scott Morrison has spoken out nine months after his government was defeated at the federal election. In an interview with News Corp, the former Prime Minister says he has received enormous support in his electorate of Cook and has not been overly critical of the current Labor government. In a message to his critics, Morrison said that, quote, if people are thinking I'm sitting here rocking myself to sleep at night in the fetal position, no, I'm not. He remains on the opposition backbench even after calls for his re resignation from Parliament over the secret ministries scandal. Well, while the lower house is where government is decided, the upper house is shaping up to be a close contest in New South Wales ahead of next month's state election. A number of minor parties are aiming to get into Parliament, while we're also set to see several independent groups being backed by parties. Senior reporter Darby Travers is more. Almost 20 different candidates and groups are now set to contest at the upcoming 2023 New South Wales state election. In addition to new minor parties like the Public Education Party, several groups will also be running parties like Family First Australia One and the Revive Australia Party will be backing independents as well as the Socialist Equality Party. One of their candidates is Oscar Grenfell. The party has criticised other socialist parties in the past and also rejected identity policies in addition to claiming the federal voice to parliament will be comprised of what they've called Aboriginal elites. So what we're raising about the voice is, I mean, it serves several purposes. I think a key one is to divert attention from the right-wing agenda of, of the federal Labor government this is a, a pro-war government, which is deepening Australia's alignment with the US war drive against China, which is declaring that uh, workers need to make sacrifices amid the economic crisis, uh, and which is letting COVID rip in a manner uh, indistinguishable from Morrison. Uh, so on what basis do they make an appeal? They're seeking to win support, you know, especially from middle class elements on the basis of racial identity politics. What we raise is that uh, Aboriginal people, vast mass of them, are the most oppressed section of the working class. Uh, their oppression is a product of the capitalist system and it's not going to be resolved by creating an advisory body um, to the capitalist state. Which Socialist Alliance, which is registered, will also be running in an attempt to pick up their first ever MP. Another minor party running is the Sustainable Australia Party. William Burke founded the party more than a decade ago and is calling for migration to be brought down to what he's called a sustainable level. The policy has been criticised by some as racist, but Sustainable Australia has previously claimed that those are smears. Burke, the party's lead upper house candidate, is facing questions about whether the federal Labor government would actually listen to him as a state upper house MP on the issue. Well, I think they would um, listen. Whether they act um, is another thing. But I think that, um, you know, if you have got a position in a state upper house and you're talking about an issue that the vast majority of Australians agree, Poll after poll shows that 70% of Australians don't want this extreme level of population growth that goes to this big Australia. Australia is an overwhelmingly pro-migration country. Sustainable Australia Party is a pro-migration party, but it's got to be done at a level that is democratic, manageable, sustainable. So um, I think I can be a lightning rod in state parliament to call for a population plebiscite, for example, and I think that that would have a lot of um, a lot of impetus in uh, convincing our federal politicians to listen to the people. New South Wales will head to the polls on March 25. The Bureau of Meteorology has confirmed there is no tsunami threat for Australia after an earthquake struck Papua New Guinea. The earthquake reported a magnitude of 6.2, struck early this morning at a depth of around 57 kilometres in the country's New Britain province. 
there have not been reports of serious injuries or damage. Patrick Dangerfield has overnight been named the new captain of the Geelong Cats out of the 2023 AFL season. He will be the club's 54th ever captain, succeeding Joel Selwood, who retired after last year's Premiership win against the Swans. Tom Stewart has also been named vice-captain. Coach Chris Scott says the pair are, quote, wonderful representatives of a group of players who know what it takes to unlock excellence at the highest level of our sport. We, are, we all know how fortunate we are to have them at our club. This year's footy season begins on March 16. And Isaac and Amelie in Perth will look at what's making news right now on WAMN News. Thank you, Leo. Tonight on WAMN News, Premier Mark McGowan urged to reissue electricity credit to WA families in the upcoming budget as the cost of living continues to rise. An exclusive report coming up. Also tonight, mental health mandate to save public school kids. Coroner's inquest into seven-year-old Aishwarya Ashwell's death reveals government failure when it comes to hospital staffing. Lord Mayor Basil Zemplis on the future of Perth CBD. And later, Dr Andrew Miller's comment. Join us tonight on the WMN News Facebook page and YouTube channel. Thanks both Ivan and Melly there now to tomorrow's weather forecast right across the country. Brisbane partly cloudy, 30 degrees, partly cloudy for Sydney as well, 26, top of 28 in Canberra, down to 19 in Melbourne where the showers expected, 18 in Hobart, Adelaide, it'll be 26 sunny, 27 in Alice Springs, 36 in Perth and in Darwin, thunderstorms expected a warm but wet top of 29. A reminder of the top stories we're following on 6 News this hour and it's been revealed Lydia Thorpe was removed from the Mardi Gras parade in Sydney last night after blocking what is believed to be a police float. The independent senator has called for no cops at Pride, authority saying she won't be charged for her actions. And more than 10,000 people have protested in Berlin against Germany giving weapons to Ukraine. It follows rallies across Europe in support of Kyiv after the one year anniversary of the war with Russia was marked. And that is 6 News for this hour. There's more news 24 7 on our website 6newsau.com and on social media just search 6newsau to find us more news coverage continues right after this for now though i'm leonardo Puglisi. thanks to your company good night Breaks. It pains me to announce that I have no option but to resign from the Office of Premier. Reimpose stage three stay-at-home uh, restrictions.